Hello and welcome to the course called ba Basic Cognitive Processes. I am Dr. Arkwarma from IIT Kanpur. The topic of today's lecture is uh, sensation and perception. In today's lecture, we will talk about uh, how information received by senses is transduced into meaningful information that we can act about and that we can, you know, uh, uh, make use of. I will start with a series of pictures and I just want you to look at them and tell me uh, what you or think over it, uh, what you see in them. What do you see here? You see that there is a fat lady uh, standing in front of a glass and in that glass she is actually looking at herself as she has grown much slimmer. Now is this a trick uh, or is this what the lady is actually seeing uh, or let us say at least this is what we are seeing uh, from that uh, picture. Let us look at some other pictures. If I ask you which of the two lines is uh, larger, the line at the top or line at the bottom, uh, some of you might give uh, have different answers. Just to tell you that both of these lines are exactly equal in length. Do you also see a white triangle superimposed on a black uh, lined triangle here? Uh, I also see that, but uh, the thing is that there is no white triangle in this figure. It is just we who are actually seeing that. Do you see a bridge or a fleet of uh, ships here? I guess I see a uh, bridge, but if I focus, I see a fleet of ships as well. What is this? Is it a rabbit or a bird? Now, if you noticed these pictures, uh, you probably saw something uh, which was probably not there in the pictures. Okay. Uh, why did that happen? Were you making a mistake or is it your senses playing tricks on you? This is exactly what we, uh, you know, uh, want to study when, you, uh, when we really want to, uh, you know, uh, uh, investigate what perceptual processes are like. Is perception an accurate process? Does it really reflect what the world uh, holds or does your senses or does your sensory modality uh, give you the exact and accurate picture of whatever it receives. Let us delve deeper into this question by talking about what perception is. Perception is the set of processes by which we recognize, organize and make sense of the sensations we receive from environmental stimuli. Now, if you notice this definition makes a case of difference between perception and sensation. Perception is what we are actually doing to sensation, what is actually happening uh, to whatever sensations or sensory input that we are getting from the different senses. Uh, hold on to this definition, let us uh, talk about another definition. Another definition of perception says that perception is the process by which uh, the cognitive system constructs an internal representation of the outside world. What am I trying to say here? I am trying to tell you that there is a lot of information that your senses receive from the outside world. To interact with or to be able to use that information, you have to create a replica or a representation of that information inside your head. Perception is the process that helps you do so. Okay? So, if you notice in these two definitions, we are actually talking about two key components of perception. First is that perception is a constructive active process. We are actually actively engaged with the information that we are receiving. The second is perception is about representation. Okay? It might be different from reality. It is the representation of the reality which your senses give you. Say for example, if you talk about people who have uh, myopia or hypermetropia, you know, people who have powers uh, in, in their eyes, you know, the ones uh, wearing spectacles like me. Now, is it that the uh, world has changed uh, and that we cannot see it? It is probably our eyes have changed in a manner that we do not see, uh, you know, the exact thing that is out there. Okay. Now, that, that is one of the ways you could say that sensory information can not always be correct. If you move around a particular room and you are looking at an object from different angles, the information that you receive from that object is very different from each of those angles. 
but what you see is the same object very stable and not changing. That is also what is achieved via the process of perception. In this series of lectures on sensation and perception, uh, we will talk about how are these processes uh, achieved and how does perception really uh, shape uh, your uh, view of the world. Now, uh, there could be some key issues in perception. One of them is that perception may or may not be an accurate representation of the reality. Okay? Uh, as you saw in the pictures uh, just presented, uh, you were seeing something, uh, but that was uh, probably not really there. Instead, perception is actually an interpretation of the sensory input. As I was saying, you are getting some sensory input and your uh, brain or your mind is interpreting that sensory input in a particular fashion, which is what you, uh, you know, uh, uh, can use or which is what is available to you uh, to act upon or to think about and that is what perception is actually about. Now, there are two things that, you know, sometimes your senses may deceive you. Say, for example, for that lady, uh, which I showed you, who was probably drunk and so was uh, looking at herself as to have become very thin. Drugs and different kinds of uh, these things, uh, you know, do uh, have that uh, kind of an effect on people. Also, senses may be erroneous sometimes. Say, for example, uh, the, uh, the example of uh, our eyes not functioning properly. You know, the problem could be with the instrument uh, or with the senses which is uh, getting the information from the outside world to the inside world that is your mind space. So, what is, uh, what are the, you know, different uh, stages in perception? What are the different aspects of perceptual processes? There are at least four of them which we will talk about. The first is sensation. Let us talk about how all of this story really starts. What is sensation? What is sensory input? How do we make sense of sensory input? The second is, how are these representations formed from sensory input, uh, you know, uh, to the point that we can actually make use of this information, to the point we can organize this information. The third aspect itself is perception, which we already talked about. How do you organize and, uh, you know, uh, arrange the data or arrange the information coming in from the world. We will also talk about as a final uh, uh, you know, section of this chapter uh, about variety of influences on perception. What are the kinds of influences uh, you know, that impact how you see the world? So, with these four topics in mind, uh, this is how you can organize this uh, series of lecture on sensation and perception. Now, let us talk about the first part, sensation. Uh, you know, a question often asked in uh, some philosophy classes is that uh, if a tree falls in a forest and there is nobody to hear it, is there a sound produced? Now, you can think over it over and over again and you might have difference of opinion, uh, but the answer I am going to give you is that no, uh, there is no sound produced. But you will say that, you know, the tree has fallen, there is displacement, there is some potential energy uh, and so definitely there must be something that has happened there. Let us, uh, you know, look at this answer in bit more detail. What is sound? Sound is actually caused by a wave of molecules, but the waves themselves are not sound. Okay? Uh, sound is actually a psychological event and it depends on uh, the nervous system, the brain to transduce this waves to the transduce the physical energy of the waves to a nerve impulse that is generated in your brain that gives you the experience of sound. So, you need the brain to have a sound, you need somebody to, you know, for the sound to actually have existed, otherwise there will be just random waves which are generated and, you know, then uh, finally dissipate over. Uh, without a brain to register the transduced physical energy, there can be no sound. The situation is uh, exactly analogous to the relationship of wavelength to the uh, U uh, and of amplitude to lightness. If there is nothing, you know, if there is no object to interpret this uh, wavelength, uh, you will never have this concept of different use. Uh, or if there is nothing to decipher these amplitudes or, uh, you know, uh, 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 transduce these amplitudes uh, to lightness, you will not have bright or dim lights. Okay. So, this, with this in background, let us try and talk more about sensation. So, physical properties lead to psychological events, but they are not the events themselves. The discipline of psychophysics actually charts the relationship between physical events and, our psych and psychological events, that is our experience of these physical events. 
So psychophysics is basically the field which will help you uh, really deal with sensations, which will help you to navigate uh, sensations and to understand how sensations are converted into psychological events like experience. Okay, thank you.